Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today in another short video. Uh, before we start again, I want to make mention of this company, Purpose and Proverbs. Please support them. They don't sponsor us or anything, it's just they sell these really beautiful Christian merchandise. So go and support them. These are all stickers uh, that they that they sell. But you will see if you go to their website, they've got house, house decor, home decor, clothing, Bible accessories, uh, journaling stuff. They've got lots of stuff that you can buy. So they are a South African company, so please yes, support them if you can. In this short video that I'm going to do, I'm going to touch on one verse, and I really want you to go in and sit with this verse and, and ask the Holy Spirit to, 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 to speak to you about this verse in, in, in the way I'm going to say and explain it. Um, this will be different than you might have heard before, uh, the way I'm going to use this verse. Um, I'm not saying you've got to believe me, this is what I believe, and I want you to go and see what the Holy Spirit tells you about this verse. So, the verse I'm going to uh, use here is 1 Corinthians 15, verse 23 till 25. I'm going to read it out of different translations so that you can hear um, what they all are saying about this verse. So, this verse is going to do uh, about the day of the Lord. And I want you to see what they say about the day of the Lord. Because we've got a mainstream belief out there of the day of the Lord. And then we've got a couple of different beliefs um, about the Day of the Lord. Most people obviously believe the mainstream one, uh, which will talk about the rapture and, and all that. But I want you to listen to this and just get another perspective of, of what this verse might be saying. So let, let's read you from the King James ver, uh, Version first. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruit, afterwards they that are Christ's at his coming, then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down a rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. Let's look at the American Standard Version. But each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, then they that are Christ's at his coming, then cometh the end when he shall deliver up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have abolished all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he put his, all his enemies under his feet. Amplified. But each in his own rank and turn, Christ the Messiah is the first fruits. Then those who are Christ's, own will be resurrected at His coming. After that comes the end, the completion. When He delivers over the kingdom to God the Father after rendering inop inoperative and abolishing every other rule and every authority and power. For Christ must be King and reign until He has put all His enemies under His feet. Oh, the Amplified says it so beautifully. So. Have you noticed what I've read there? Have you read them slowly? Maybe go read them again slowly and see what it's saying here. Do you see it speaks of three things that's going to happen on the day of the Lord? When it speaks about three things, when it talks about end times and stuff, three things. Everything in your Bible happens in threes. There's, the Bible exists in threes. Everything's existence is in threes. Um, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Uh, Jesus was crucified and, and was and died three days. Three rooms in the tabernacle, the outer court, the holy place, and the holies of holies. Faith, hope, love, the way, the truth, the life. So we can continue. There's so many of them in the Bible. Everything happens in threes. That pattern will continue till Jesus comes back. That pattern still continues. To this day, threes, it will always happen in threes when God is moving. It shows His, um, His holiness, His godliness, His glory. Everything is in threes. So, if we read this, knowing that everything comes in threes, let's see what is these three things He says. He says, 
Christ the first fruit. One. That's number one. Then number two, it says afterwards. So Christ the first fruit, afterwards, after this thing, he says, they that are Christ at his coming. So when he comes, we will be Christ like. Second group. And then he says, then cometh. So after this one, after this one, he says, then cometh the end. Third one. These two were not the end. The third one is the end. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God. Three things. Already these three things, the way I read it now, doesn't actually fit into the rapture theology. It's saying something different here. And I'm going to explain it to you now. Christ the first fruit. I'm going to read Romans 8 verse 29. For whom he did foreknown, he also did predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the first among many brethren. Speaking about Jesus here. When Jesus came to the earth, he was Christ the first fruit. He was um, the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. He was the firstborn, the first fruit. Jesus, when he was born, Christ, when he came to the earth, died was resurrected he was the first fruit the brother of many the first fruit of many we are having we we carry his fruit now these days that's the first one the second one after they that are christ's at his coming okay so the second thing they say is after there's a there's a time that goes between christ the first fruit and then after that they are christ the Listen to what the Amplified says it so beautifully. By each of his rank and turn. So there's a rank, order, and a turn. Three things. It's got to work in this order, in this rank. First, Christ the Messiah is the first fruit. Then those who are Christ's own will be resurrected at his coming. The second one speaks about his coming. Alright, so remember the first one, first fruits, he was born, he lived on the earth. The second one speaks about his coming, and when he's coming, they will be Christ's, we will be his. He's talking about this. So, I said to you, 2 Corinthians um, 13 verse 5 says, Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your, your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates Colossians 1 27 to whom God should make known what is the riches and the glory of his mystery among the Gentiles which is Christ in you the hope of glory you can read it in Romans um, 8 verse 10 Galatians 2 20 um, all those speak of Christ in you that that what is in you there's something going to happen with that at the second coming because we're going to be Christ's at his second coming all right so Bear with me, second coming, you will say yes, but it can still mean this, but wait, there's one more. Then the third one says, then cometh the end. So the coming is not the end. He says, he speaks about the coming and he says, then cometh the end. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God. So at the second coming, he's not giving the kingdom over to God. He's there for the Christ-like people, the the Christ, the ones that's there for him, he comes for them at the second one. He's got something to do with them. He's going to work with them. The third one is the coming of Jesus in his full glory, the rule and reign of Jesus. That's what the third one is talking about. When Jesus physically comes to, to the earth, is the third one. Um, that's when death will be defeated. Death is, will no more reign. The sting of death will be gone. That's at the third one. All right, so let me recap you how I see this. All right, and you go ask the Holy Spirit to talk to you about this. Three things will happen on this earth. One has already happened. Two still needs to happen. Jesus the Messiah came, which is number one that it talks about there. This coming of Jesus, the second one, uh, which is after they that are Christ at his coming. When he the coming of Christ 
That's the second thing. That's what we're waiting for now. Some call it the rapture. I don't. I call it the coming of Christ, the manifestation of Christ in us, the hope of glory. That's going to happen next. That's what we're hoping for. I'm not waiting for to be taken somewhere. I'm waiting for something to come alive in me, like a, like a worm that becomes this beautiful butterfly. That's going to happen with me. That metamorphosis, that one I'm carrying inside. I was impregnated by the Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit, the same way Mary was impregnated. I am carrying something which has got to be birthed, like Romans speaks about, Romans 8. That's the second coming, the, the coming that we are waiting for now. That's going to happen next. And sometime after that, which we won't know, Jesus is physically coming to the earth to set his rulership in place. All right? That's when he comes and rules over death. That's where the third one is, which is then cometh the end. At the third one, there cometh the end. When, sh when he shall have delivered up the kingdom, he's bringing his kingdom to the earth. He's bringing it to the physical earth, to us as the earth spiritually. He's bringing his kingdom in us. It's the third one. So go think about this. Jesus came, the Messiah. That verse is saying it in the detail. The second one he says is for the Christ like people, Christ that is coming, which has got to happen now, hopefully soon. And then only after that it will be the end. So, second one, I believe, the coming of Christ is Christ in us being manifested. We as his sons of God are going to move on the earth and operate fully under his authority we're going to rule and reign walk with him be his hands and feet on the earth to bring in the the big harvest we need the big harvest the latter rains must fall so that the big harvest can come in that's when there will be unity in the church because he is going to be the head of this body when he comes that's why he's coming to be the head of that body the manifestation of him in the body him, the one many-membered body being Christ said, that's not at the moment. We don't see that at the moment. All churches are fighting against each other. Christians are fighting against each other. There's no unity. There will be no unity in the way we want to see it, as it says in Scripture. It will happen on the second time when Jesus comes now again, his second coming. The first one he did 2,000 years ago. When he comes now, he will go to his sons and daughters, which are in a love relationship with him, and he will be manifested in us. The same thing that happened to Jesus on top of the mountain. When he got glorified. We will be glorified as his bride. And we will work in love with him on this earth. And once that period is gone. Then the end will come. When Jesus physically comes down. The second one he's not physically coming down. He's in us and he's going to manifest in us. The second time. The, the, the second time is going to be a manifest presence. He's going to come forth. He's going to manifest himself in his bride. The third time he's going to come physically down. Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father. He's coming down to the earth to set his kingdom and his rulership in place, which his sons have been working on the earth for. So if you have got questions, you can ask me questions in the comments. But go think about this verse. It actually says it so beautifully how to see what's going to happen in the future. It takes away some of the theologies that's out there and, and makes you think differently. So use it, ask the Holy Spirit, try to get this thing clean, that you don't think of what you know, been taught over the years, and go ask the Holy Spirit, is this the truth? And then go look in Scripture if this is the truth. Alright, if this is going to happen. You will see in Scripture, if you know this truth, you will see it's everywhere in Scripture. But you first need to get rid of your, your old doctrine and ask the Holy Spirit to, to make you, to take the, I want to say the soul bit out of you so you can become a Paul. Take that veil off you so that you, when you go into Damascus, that you can have an encounter with Jesus and He can open up your eyes so that you can see the Scripture. You might think you're like a Paul, a soul, you know the Scriptures. You also thought that, and then when you had an encounter with Jesus, the veil was taken, the, the blindness that was caused by the veil was taken away and he could see Christ in everything, Jesus in everything. Um, we need the same thing, we, have, we need a Damascus uh, encounter to see these things in the Bible so that the veils can be removed. So use it, apply it, 
and and yeah, hopefully this will will bring you some um, clarification and and something to go think about at the end of the day. Thank you so much for watching. Till the next time. Goodbye.